Peace in from the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Amateur Radio. <clears throat> uh, a viewer recently asked me a bunch of questions, and they were very complicated and subtle and, and um, involved questions uh, phrased in such short language. It was really quite remarkable how much curiosity was displayed there, but I think that one, uh, I recommended uh, the ARRL Antenna book, the American Radio Relay League Antenna book, uh, as a reference for all kinds of questions about antennas. But there is a particular question that I think should be addressed specifically, and it has to do with resonance in an antenna. The question basically was, <clears throat> does an antenna have to be resonant in order to work well? And the answer is most emphatically, no, it doesn't. The antenna itself does not have to be resonant. In fact, there are antennas that don't have any resonant frequency at all and work very well. Terminated long wires and rhombics being an excellent example of those types of antennas. So resonance is not a sacred thing in antenna uh, theory. What is important is that the transmitter, that your transmitter, see the impedance that it wants to see so that it will function in its most efficient manner. That's consideration number one. Most ham radio transmitters want to see 50 ohms without any reactance, that is to say, 50 ohms purely resistive impedance. And even if an antenna is not resonant, a transmatch can tune out the reactance if there is any. Well, there always will be if the antenna is not resonant. <clears throat> um, or if the, uh, re if the resistance is way, way different than 50 ohms, a transmatch can take care of that and make the transmitter see the 50 ohms that it wants to see. The other consideration, uh, the major consideration, is the transmission line between the transmatch or transmitter and the antenna. Uh, if the antenna is not resonant and or if the standing wave ratio is very high on that transmission line, in some cases there may be increased loss in that transmission line. And that loss can degrade the performance of an antenna. But even a resonant antenna can have a very high standing wave ratio and thereby exhibit a transmission line loss that's also very high. For example, if you feed a full wavelength antenna, dipole antenna, a full wavelength long, in the center with RG58U coax, that's that small coax that's pretty lossy uh, per unit length. If you feed an antenna like that, you're going to have a very high SWR indeed, probably on the order of 20 to 1 or even worse. So even though the antenna is resonant, and even if you use a transmatch at the transmitter, you're not going to get very good performance out of such an antenna, especially if the transmission line is long. So resonance is not sacred. Uh, resonance does not guarantee good performance in an antenna. Uh, in fact, it can, in fact, there can be rotten performance in an antenna that's resonant. And an antenna that's not resonant if fed with the proper type of transmission line, such as open wire, low loss line, and a transmatch, can work very, very well, every bit as efficiently as a resonant antenna can do. So the resonance is sort of overblown, maybe because we think about the effects that you get in a musical instrument where at certain frequencies you get much greater amplitude of sound than at other frequencies, and it's because of the resonance in the instrument. But in, in a ham radio antenna, resonance is not like that. It doesn't work quite like that. So don't put too much emphasis on the importance of resonance. Put emphasis 
on a low loss transmission line, keep the loss in that line low and give the transmitter the 50 ohm pure resistive impedance that it wants to see so that its final amplifier will operate at its most efficient possible level. If you can do those two things, and then of course other considerations such as getting the antenna up high in the clear and away from objects that will get in the way of the radiation coming from it, you'll have a good antenna. Whether it's resonant or not makes absolutely no difference in the end. Stan Gibalisco, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey 1. Good Vibrations, signing off from the black holes of Dakota Territory, United States of Amateur Radio 73, which means best regards in ham radio jargon, and so long for now.